Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake, aka Tag, and today we're back in action with my number one deck without wall breakers, without the witch, and without the elixir golem. So, right now, the meta is full of witches and wall breakers, and if you want to counter it, you gotta use the Valkyrie, you gotta use the Executioner, and we have a very fast cycle to consistently get back to them. A lot of people in this current meta are also still running Fishermen instead of Tornadoes, so that's why we have Balloon as our win condition. Let's go jump spray in some games and let's assert some dominance. So this guy's gonna go for wall breakers. We're gonna immediately shut them down with a zap and we're gonna see what's up. So we can easily knock that off. And then we can go in for a Valkyrie right on top of the Goblin Gang. So you see Goblin Gang, we see wall breakers. This is probably gonna be a Mega Knight deck. And that's really good for me because we have the Executioner, we got Valkyrie. We have so many answers to this guy. I hate Witch so much. So that's why I'm rocking Executioner and Valkyrie in a very fast cycle. And usually if they have the Witch, they're not gonna have amazing air answers. So that's gonna be like one of their few cards that they have. I need to go for a Tornado. And then we need to go for a Skeleton's Ice Spirit. So the Ice Spirit does not just get destroyed by the Witch immediately. Got to go for our Skeletons first here. So I assume he's going to Miner or Wall Breakers. We can just go for a Valkyrie and then Zap this. So then he gets less damage on our Valkyrie. So what do you have, man? You're going to have Inferno Dragon. All right. So Inferno Dragon can get easily countered by an Executioner since the Inferno Dragon's out of cycle. Oh my gosh, give me that value. That's what I'm talking about, boys. He has given me a snack and a half, and we can easily go in for an Ice Spirit as well. Just make sure the Inferno Dragon is preoccupied for an even longer period of time. And this is what I'm talking about. This is so good for me. I want to go in for a Miner here to keep our Executioner a little bit healthier, so then we have another tank for it. So then our opponent is like, oh, what do I do? I have to go for Wall Breakers on defense. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, that feels so bad. So when you catch your opponent in a bad card cycle with Executioner on the tower, you're going to be a happy camper. I can ignore that Miner, or I could drop Skeletons. Skeletons are probably going to be the best answer for one Elixir. I deny maybe three or four more hits. And then the Valkyrie connects to the tower because he exhausted his Elixir playing aggressive instead of playing defensive. So a lot of people that are playing Wall Breakers are super, super aggressive. And if you have a great defensive deck and they're trying to trade Elixir for damage, they're never going to be able to make that happen against you in this matchup. So we can just go for our Executioner in the back. He's probably going to go for like a Mega Knight or something extremely skillless at the river. And I am ready. Yeah, there it is. So he's going to go in for Wall Breakers. And we can just go in for a Tornado to pull back the Wall Breakers and the Inferno Dragon. So then the Inferno Dragon retargets. We can go for a Valkyrie right on top. So then we're able to go and kill his Witch. And then we need to go in for a Balloon and then zap the uh, Bats that are inevitably going to come down. So here we go. We're going to zap the Bats. And I can just go in for an Ice Spirit and then Valkyrie again. So this is ideally what we want to have happen. Tornado as well. So then the uh, Wall Breakers don't all connect to our tower. And then we can go in for our Skeletons to finish off his Miner. So this deck is the deck that I prefer in the meta that does not have Witch, that does not have Elixir Golem, and does not have Wall Breakers, and it counters them all. So this is the one deck that I want to play in the meta, only deck that I feel comfortable playing that does not have those cards. And it's just so unbelievably strong if you play it correctly against people that spam you super aggressively like this man. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. So we got a game against Lewis. He's already saucing out the Elixir Golem Blob. And oh my gosh, Lewis, you have absolutely no chill whatsoever. You're going to go in for <laughs> Bats, Miner, and Wall Breakers all at the river on the left-hand side. And that's what this meta is, man. People just spam viciously at the river and don't care at all. So this is the deck to destroy them. Hopefully we can go in for an Executioner on the left-hand side to kill his Witch. And sometimes the Executioner is not very intelligent, not the sharpest tool in his shed and he decides to hit Skeletons instead of the Witch. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. I just want him to hit the Witch. That's all I want in my life. There he goes. He actually has a little bit of intelligence for once in his life. We can go in for a Balloon and Miner here. So we have Executioner, we have Balloon, we have Miner, we have Zap. I think we might be able to just win this game already. I'm gonna go for a Zap to reset the Inferno Dragon so it dies and doesn't kill my Balloon. And I think we just won the game. Like if they overcommit early on into an Executioner, you counter push with the Balloon Miner, the game is effectively over. There's nothing he can do to come back. A lot of the times these people are going to be relying on a very flimsy like Inferno Dragon or Bats, which can just get zapped and countered very easily. So if you ever play against someone like this, which I would say 95% of the community is playing like this right now, you literally just go Executioner or Valkyrie on defense, you go in for your Balloon, you zap the Bats, and you win the game. And it's as simple as that. It feels so good too. You can go in for another Executioner on the left-hand side. I assume you might Mega Knight at the river, and then we can just use a Miner, and we'll be fine. Heck, if you Mega Knights on the right and we have Skeletons and Ice Spirit, you know what we can do? We can activate King Tower as well, so there's just so many things that we can do. We go for a Zap to shut down those Bats, and then our Executioner will go and hit the Inferno Dragon and not Bats while the Inferno Dragon locks on top of us. So, I think we're doing pretty okay here. Maybe we can even go for a 3 Crown because he's just exhausted both of his air counters, and I think that's going to be our best play. Let's just assert dominance to the highest degree, going for our Miner in a spot that this tower won't be able to hit. Only the King Tower hits. 
Goes in for a Mega Knight. He has no Elixir. And uh, yeah, I think we win the game. So I'm going to go in for a Valkyrie, so then the Mega Knight walks towards us. And I can go in for a Tornado, so then the Wall Breakers go right into the Valkyrie, so they die. And we're in a really good spot, guys. We're going to be able to 3 crown this dude. So he's still viciously playing at the river, because that's what they know. That is their religion. That is their creed. That is their life choice. They never deviate from that. And we just need to go in for a Valkyrie to shut down his Witch, and well, we're going to walk away with a fat W if we miner here. He's going to predict the miner here, back there. And we're just not going to let that happen. There we go. We go in for a Tornado as well, just to pull everything away. And all we need to do is cycle back to one more Zap, and we walk with the fattest W ever. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Lewis, you are indicative of the entire community right now playing Wall Breakers, so uh, yeah, you guys would just dominate them. We're gonna drop Skeletons in the back just to cycle, and then we're gonna go for a Meyer to kick open this game, and this guy is gonna drop something in response, right? Yeah, there's a Night Witch, all right. So we already know what he's got, guys. There's no surprise here. It's 100% gonna be that Elixir Golem deck that we just hate to play against. There it is. Elixir Golem dropped at the river with the Night Witch. We can combat this and drop a Valkyrie, so then the uh, <laughs> really big issue of the Fisherman is not going to go and go and yoink our Executioner, other uh, than Tragic, man. So we need to go for a Skellies here and then Ice Spirit, so then Sparky hits that instead, does not hit our tower. And we can go in for a Balloon and Miner now. So this is the play that we want to do. We want to go in for Executioner, Balloon, Miner on defense to offense when we get all that Elixir from the Elixir Golem. We should be able to go and kill his Executioner counters, right? Pretty easily on offense. Like, as long as they're grouped up, we're not going to have any issues. And if he continues to spam when he's at a low amount of Elixir without the Night Witch, we're fine because we don't even have to Tornado. We don't have to spend any Elixir here. The Golemites don't even pop and kill Skeletons, so they're going to stay alive, get a huge Elixir advantage, and then we catapult this into an offensive play. If he goes Sparky, we go in for a Miner plus Zap on it. And we know he's got Sparky in this deck. It's just a matter of time before he drops it, right? And this is going so well for me. We might even be able to 3 crown him. But yeah, if you do play this correctly against Sparky players, you can still assert dominance. Go in for a Zap plus Miner right on top of that Sparky. Make sure that we're going to be able to reset his tower and 3 crown him because he's trying to go off his lane. Can't do that. Executioner just does too much damage. If you're trying to ignore that, you're just crazy. You're wild. You're going to lose the game immediately. All right, so we're going to go and drop a Zap right on top of the Zeiss Spirit so it does not connect to our tower, and then we're going to immediately follow up with a Miner on his tower. We don't know if he's got a Fast Cycle deck with, like, XE Tornado, so we definitely want to make sure that we do not expend too much Elixir and give him answers to King Tower activation, like Miner in the back, right? Just don't want to do that. Never want to give him a huge Elixir advantage or give him the capability of defending our balloons for the rest of the game super easily. Let's go in for our Executioner now. We see Magic Archer and we see Valkyrie. So this guy really hates Witch as well, just like me, man. He's like, you know what? I don't want to lose to any more Witch players, so I'm going to have a Magic Archer and I'm also going to have Valkyrie in my deck. I kind of like that. That's kind of the same concept that I have with my Executioner and then also Valkyrie. But he's going to have Electro Dragon as well, so he's got a step up on me, doesn't he? He's also got Cannon for the Wizard Golem for a very cost-efficient defense. I kind of like his deck, to be honest. Interesting. Does have Wall Breakers that we can just immediately zap, and then he's not going to get damage on our tower. We can go in for Skeletons, so that does not get a connection. And then I think that we want to go in for like an Ice Spirit plus Miner push here. Just so then the Ice Spirit's able to tank the Miner, and then we get some damage that way. And we bait out a Valkyrie, so that's really cool. Four Elixir investment from him. That doesn't give him any value because it's not immediately right on top of the Miner. Because he wanted to stop the Ice Spirit from connecting to the tower, so he purposely dropped it very far away from his tower. So there wasn't able to get any splash damage there. And as a result, we were able to, to uh, have a very long travel distance to catch our Miner, so that worked really, really well for me. I'm going to go for a Bloon and see if he has a big spell or any way of stopping that. I saw Electro Dragon last time, so that's not really a great answer, in my opinion. I can even go for a Tornado so that it dies a little bit quicker, and then it's also dispersed. I was hoping that we'd get a little bit more value with our Bloon, but that's still enough damage for me. I'm pretty happy with that. Going for an Ice Spirit. You guys already know that Valkyrie is just so overpowered against Wall Breakers. He only gets one hit there with the Valkyrie tanking, so that's fine. Valkyrie actually is able to stop a Wall Breaker even when he has a tank in front, so that's crazy. Let's go for a Miner for some more chip damage. I'm obviously not going to go in for a Balloon right into a Magic Archer, which is not a good play. Go in for an Executioner. I expect him to go for Wall Breakers on the other side, hopefully. If he doesn't, what we can do is we can go in for a Tornado. Group everything up, so then we're able to get a Valkyrie right on top. Make sure that... This Magic Archer is not able to hit our tower. Really, really important that we didn't group everything up right into our tower. 
And then our Valkyrie obliterates the World Breakers so easily, man. Just eats them like a snack every time. We kill his Magic Archer, we're in a great spot. I'm gonna go for a Miter so we can keep our Xe a little bit healthier. And then have a tank for our Xe and Balloon. Could actually go and Tornado this the opposite lane, and that's not the worst play in the world, because it's not gonna be able to hit everything. And then I think that the Balloon is gonna be able to break through, because we were able to Tornado it. I think the Balloon at least gives us death damage. If that happens, I'm super happy. Oh, come on! Give it to Daddy, let's go. Now we go in for Ice Spirit to stop his Wall Breakers, so then... Okay, we actually need to go in for a Zap. Whoa, he's got Earthquake to allow his Wall Breakers to connect. That was actually a really good play. This guy's played pretty well. He's got a very interesting deck. And for once in our lives, we don't play against Elixir Golem or Witch in the same deck. So, yeah, very interesting to see this. GG, well played. And peace out. Good player running a crazy deck that's innovative and actually beats the meta. We're going to sauce out a good luck here and an Ice Spirit, and we're going to see what's up. We're going to Ice Spirit at the river to try to get a little bit of chip damage, and we see three Musketeers. Unfortunately, guys, I do not have my tornado. I've grouped them all up on the left hand side, sauced out a Valkyrie right on top of it, and been chilling. But we did not have the cycle we wanted, so unfortunately we're gonna have to wait and then plant a Valkyrie on top of this mess. So we're gonna go for a Valkyrie right now on top of this Executioner, on top of his two Musketeers. I think I actually have to zap this to shut it down. Otherwise, I think the Executioner would have gotten a hit on my tower. That's kind of weird to think about that the Executioner plus two Musketeers is able to damage down a Valkyrie that quickly, but that thing got shredded. She got eaten alive, thrown to the wolves. We're going to go in for a Balloon plus Miner on the right, see if we can get some chip damage here now, because... Oh, wow, I was like... You know, all of his air counters are probably out of cycle, since he doesn't have Executioner in cycle. He doesn't have three Musketeers in cycle. What does he have? Well, guys, let me tell you. He's got Minion Horde plus Rail Giant. <laughs> so this is one of those games that I might just lose, because I completely didn't understand what this man had. Credit to him coming up with an innovative deck that just doesn't make sense, to be honest. But it's cool. It's cool to see decks that are just spectacularly weird like this because you just don't see enough innovation in this meta. You see the same things over and over again. You see Elixir Golem plus Sparky every single game. And this guy's got something different. It works out pretty well for him, especially since, I mean, everything in his deck kind of shoots up like against me. But uh, yeah, I made a calculated decision. It didn't work out because this guy made up his own deck. And uh, yeah, we got punished really, really hard for that play, going in for that balloon there. So now I know in the future, hey, not going to do that against this guy because he's too savage. He's too wild. We go for an Ice Spear plus Zap so that does not hit my tower. And we'll see if we can claw our way back into this game. I assume he's probably going to go for three Musketeers in the back soon. If he does that, he's not going to have enough Elixir for... Well, it's not going to be able to kill the Balloon immediately. Maybe he drops it all in the same lane. We'll have to wait and see. I think regardless of the situation, the Balloon does hit the tower. Like, there's nothing he can do to stop that. That's going to hit the tower. Wait, he has Snowball and Tornado. Never mind. Never mind. Abort mission. Hard abort. I was just simply wrong. <laughs> he just made me look like a fool. He's like, yeah, you think you can hit our tower? That's not happening, Jake. Going Tornado that to the opposite lane. Going for a Balloon here and Miner and then Valkyrie on the left. And maybe we're able to get some damage. Please, sir, just let me take your tower. Like, don't snowball this. I know you want to, but just please don't. We need to go in for a Zap so then even if he minion hordes, we're fine. Okay. This game has been one of the wildest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Holy crap, dude. He's got Minion Horde, Snowball, Executioner, Tornado, Three Musketeers, and I just... I, I haven't had enough of this game yet. We just have to keep going. We have to strive for victory right now. Going for Skeletons, Ice Spirit, and then maybe Valkyrie on the left to keep everything alive. Okay, we need to go and Tornado everything to the, to the right so then his, uh, his Royal Giant doesn't get any ideas on us. I think we can eat that. I think that's acceptable. What do we do though? He's not gonna be able to 3M for a little bit. So let's go in for our Balloon, Ice Spirit, and then try to hit his Minion Horde that's gonna be dropped with the Zap. All right, that was the best play I could have done. Is it gonna be rewarded handsomely? Are we gonna get a hit? Yes, we do. So I think we have to three crown this guy. I don't think we can go for anything other than that. We're gonna go in for Tornado to go and pull the Royal Giant away. We're gonna go drop an Ice Spirit. I could have redirected it on the three crown, but I really don't wanna get three crowned by this guy. So that's why I decided not to. We know three Musketeers are definitely imminent. Executioner was cycled. We're gonna go in for a Balloon plus Miner here again. And we're gonna try to get like Skeletons here. Maybe Tornado everything away. Zapparino. That really didn't work. If we got one Balloon hit and then we cycled Miners, we could have won the game. But I think I just threw. I think I threw. So in this situation, I think I have to go in for a Balloon and try to cycle the Royal Giant on top of our King Tower. So the way that I want to play this is Tornado here. So then it goes and retargets. The nice golden pops and we lose. GG and well played, man. To be honest, that was one of the craziest games I've ever played in my life. And uh, yeah, 
I actually lost the game because I went in for a balloon when he shouldn't have had any air counters in cycle, but he had minion horde too. I'm gonna go for Skellies in the back. We're gonna see what's up against the dark work. This dude is gonna go in for a goblin gang. So we're gonna try to drop an ice spirit to bounce everything back and deny all damage. Let's go in for a miner on the right. I think that we might be able to keep one. The skeleton's alive and he drops in the safe spot. This guy <sighs> did not fall for our tactics, guys. Unfortunately, we did not get a juicy king to activation. So he played that pretty well. Let's go over for an executioner on the right hand side. He's got a magic archer as well. And that's going to be so much damage on our tower. And there's nothing I can really do about it. Magic archer will eventually die. And maybe I can apply some aggression on the right to even up the tower damage since we still have actually alive. And maybe he's only going to have like bats or. Which, I don't know. It's, it seems like it's going to be a pretty easy way for us to get damage on the tower. Executioner is going to lock on. We might be able to take it out fully. I was fully expecting to have like bats and we could zap those or have the executioner to combat that. That's usually what they have with rare recruit decks, but did not drop such a card. But it dropped skellies right on top of the witch so we can finish that off and not take too much damage on us. And since we see a minor deck with rare recruits, I can fully expect that he's going to go in for a minor on top of our executioner to kill it. At least that's what I'm anticipating, right? When he drops his rare recruits, so then our executioner isn't able to get some absurd value going for a Valkyrie on the left and then going for a balloon and maybe we can take the left hand side because he went for a minor plus log which is a five elixir investment that gave him no defensive capability right now like didn't even damage our units so it's really good for me I'm gonna go in for a zap here so then we can reset the witch and then hopefully get an extra hit yep I think that's one extra hit for us then we get death damage and then the executioner is hopefully able to hit the witch as well well it doesn't but it gets a lot of damage on the tower so we're kind of thriving right now I expect him to go and drop our recruits Executioner will be able to pull them if he's dropped them at the river. All the uh, rural recruits will get pulled to that, so that's why we do that placement. Just in preparation, right? Rather be safe than sorry. So we can zap the right hand side at any point, so let's just be cognizant of that and zap the left at this point. So then it's going to be two zaps and then that tower is gone or one minor hit. And this is what we were talking about. Notice this executioner placement, it pulls everything. So we're just going to be able to drop in. Valkyrie, and uh, we take minimal amount of damage. Execution replacement was prime. We still go on the right hand side with the XE. So even though it was dropped in the left because that right hand tower is closer than the King Tower, that placement is just amazing for us then. Going for another miner here, and I can just go and drop skeletons on top of his, Ice Spear on top of the skeleton. And we should be able to walk away with his W. There's nothing he can do to defend that balloon. It's just impossible when you're running a Royal Recruit deck or a Fisherman deck. You just don't have air answers, and you're going to lose the game every single time, even if you play really well. He did a great connection early on with a Magic Archer, but it just wasn't enough.